Hey guys, welcome to The Powerful Man Show, where we help married businessmen save their marriages without having to talk about it, get unstuck, and gain clarity in their lives. As I like to say, life is too short for average. I'm your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Now let's get this started. What's going on, brother? Yeah, I'm doing well. Doing you well. I love how the powerful man, Matthew, started off as kind of a joke. And we've stuck with it. You've just fell in love with the with the title and the name, and it, it's it's gone well. So uh, it always makes me smile. I like seeing you kind of dance with your head as I start to say it. Yeah, the reality is it's never been a joke to me. <laughs> I know. I, that's why it's a joke. <laughs> it's great to know where you're coming from with this but you know the story i tell myself is that yes we just did a true. podcast on stories and identity right and yeah. it's a perfect fit well i mean that's yeah. what you should do right if somebody says something to you you can you can take it two ways right you could take it as condescending or if it if it's something that elevates you just stack the evidence in your direction right uh it's amazing and so, you know, you practice what you preach and, uh, I love that about you, man. So it's, it's awesome. And it makes it a lot of fun for me. Ah, thank you. I received that. Um, yeah, thank you. Well, let's stop talking about you and let's get on to something that the guys actually want to hear some information. And today, Tim, I want to talk about how to ground your woman. How to ground your woman. Ground and pound? <laughs> Not the ground and pound, the powerful <laughs> man, Matthews. Um, but how to ground a woman, right? So, you know, a lot of times for men, right, we come home and, you know, not all guys, some guys are stay at home, right? But most of the men out there, it's probably more than a bell-shaped curve. They're going out to the office and maybe their wife is too. And they get home and the, the wife's going around. She's, you know, picking up the toys and you are too, probably. She's cooking and she's doing all these things. And then by the end of the day, she, you know, the kids are asleep and you're getting ready for bed. You crawl into bed and you're getting all ready, you know, you get your suave, you know, look going. You're ready to, to do the ground and pound. And your wife crawls in and she's just exhausted. And she's going, Oh, I'm so tired. And as you know, Tim, you know, my wife does coaching for women. And one of the things the women always say to her is, you know, when they crawl into bed, they're hoping their husband's sleeping because they're exhausted. Ooh. Yep. But here's the difference and here's the reason. It's diffused energy versus focused energy. So throughout the day, and we've talked about this a lot as far as men are hunters, right? Traditionally, if you look at it from an anthropological sense, right? They're going out there, they're quiet, they're singularly focused, right? I'm going to go out, I'm going to kill the woolly mammoth, I'm going to bring it home, I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to have sex, right? That's boom, there we go. Where the women are going out, they're diffused focus. And what diffused focus means, well, diffused focus is really not focused, but they're, they're, they're always, the radar's up for everything, right? So using the same analogy, and I'll bring it back to a modern day uh, theme, is they go out into the forest and they're looking at everything. Oh, what birds are chirping? The birds chirping because there's something going on. Oh, look at that. I can hear the river, so I know I'm near the berries. Where's Susie? Where's, you know, Jeanette or whatever it is. So they're not singularly focused on one thing. And, you know, what it studies will show, women can focus, don't get me wrong, but it's harder for them to focus on one thing at a time. They're diffused. Mm -hmm. Whereas for men, it's harder for us to be multi-focused. Really, we really singularly focused on one thing, maybe for a short period of time, and then we move on, right? But women are more diffused, and that diffused energy requires a lot, right? It requires a lot of energy. Uh, you may have experienced this. If you ever watched maybe three or four women get together and go shopping, they're all over the place. They're talking about all kinds of mm -hmm. subjects. It doesn't look like they're listening to each other as they keep talking. They're shopping. They're grabbing things all over. But really, that's how they bond. If, if us guys went out and did that, we would go nuts. We'd be like, well, I'm never hanging out with Tim again. He's all over the place. He's not listening when we do talk. He's not even really here hanging out, right? It's diffused, right? So coming back to a modern day sense, Kind of like someone who multitasks. Um, more than that, right? It's a little different. <laughs> Getting yourself out of it. You're right. <laughs> yeah, Tim, it's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> That's another podcast uh, later, and I'll talk about uh, multitasking. Yeah. But 
So what's going to happen is when you come home, right, your wife is getting diffused throughout the day. She has been worried about everybody. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and ask your woman, right? Chances are she's trying to pick up on everybody's energy. Maybe not trying consciously, but she is. She's picking up on conversations. She's picking up on the energy. She's picking up on things calling out to her. And the way it's been described to me, Tim, is, you know, a woman walks into a room, especially a messy room, and the socks on the floor are calling out to her. I need to be picked up, right? That, that something else is calling out to her. I need to be cleaned. Something else is calling out to her. I need to be paid, a bill, whatever it is. All of these things are talking to her, right? And it's not that she doesn't want to be with her man or she doesn't want to focus on her man. It's just everything is screaming at her. And the thing that's screaming at her the most, the loudest, right, that gets the most attention. Could be the kids, could be the toys on the floor, could be dinner, could be the dirty dishes, right? All of these things are constantly talking to her and screaming at her. And so when you come in as a man, right, might be subtle, you might not get the attention you're desiring. And it's not because she doesn't want to give you the attention. She's not grounded. She's not grounded. She's kind of floating around with tons of things in her, in her head. And by the end of the day, she's just exhausted. And then she needs to recharge her battery. She crawls into bed. You're ready for sexy time, right? You're ready to have sex. And she just, she's ready to recharge. She's done. End of the day. So how do you ground her, Tim? So the way you ground women and make sure that you are the focal point of what she's focusing her energy on is touch. Right? Simple touch. We all know this, guys, right? We probably touched our women a lot more when we first started dating. You know, that little hand on the lower back as you escort her through the door when you got to dinner, um, a little arm around her, something like that. When you touch your woman, and I try this at home, she'll stop and she'll be, you'll feel that she's grounded and her attention is to you. You then, when you touch your wife, I'm talking about a sensual, a nice touch, right? You know, a hug can work. But when you do touch your wife, you are the most important thing at that moment. You have grounded her so that all the other noise, for the most part, gets turned off. Now, there could be a lot of other things, screaming kids, things like that, that might you know, be louder. But touch is the easiest way to ground your woman. So if you walked up to her and you put your hand lower back, you touched her and said, baby, I need to take you to the bedroom or baby tonight right? You're going to get a much different response because now you're the focal point of what she's talking about. And that grounding is necessary for a woman, right? That grounding is needed. And if she's not receiving that grounding from you, she's going to have to get it from somewhere else, right? And that could be cleaning or doing all the other things or taking care of the room. That's why maybe us guys, we sit on the couch after a day and your wife's still around picking things up. She's not doing it because that's her job, Right? She's not doing it because that's some social contract that was written and she's the woman and you're the man. She's doing it because of this diffused energy, right? this diffused awareness and diffused focus. I'm going to call it diffused awareness You know, coming around. It's diffused. These other things in the house are, are calling to her. right? They're talking to her loudly. Uh, in some cases, it could be the dogs. right? So what it is, and she might go over and hold the dogs or hold the kids to be grounded right? To get grounded and centered. And if she doesn't, right, she's going to be exhausted. It's like draining her over and over again. It's almost like a flashlight. Like my son, I give my son a flashlight to play with in his crib. And sometimes he leaves it on and it drains, right? And next morning I had to put a new battery in. It's the same thing with your wife, right? Unless it's grounded, unless you turn it off which by grounding her through touch, you're not going to get what you want, guys. Mm. I think there's a caveat to this. It's a great topic. And there's a caveat. I think, you know, there's the, the guys get to, in my opinion. So here's the caveat. Obviously, it depends on how you go to touch, right? Because let's oh, of course. say that um, there's a guy listening to this and his marriage isn't necessarily going that well. Him and his wife have having arguments, he's getting home, she's not really showing any interest in one another, maybe they're sleeping in separate rooms, going to bed at separate times, intimacy is falling away, you know, all those kind of things. Um, obviously, you know, it's important to still ground uh, the woman, for sure, totally agree. Uh, and, I, and the way to do it, like you said, I think it's important to just emphasize really 
the the way to do this a better way to do this anyway um for a guy who's in that particular position might be for him to be more subtle with the touch because if you try to ground her by maybe giving her a kiss on the cheek as some guys who have come into the activate there's actually one guy in particular i can think of who was saying every time i go to kiss my wife on the cheek she turns away Mm. and the reason why she turns away is because in that instance she doesn't feel like he is giving her a kiss it feels like she he is getting a kiss and obviously because you know the, there's no let's say deposits in the emotional bank account if you will um the, the relationship isn't in a place where she wants to let him get a kiss um conversely you know if the the relationship's in a good place a kiss could be a good way to ground uh, but I think it's just useful to to know uh, where you're at in the where the relationship rather is at um, as regards to how it influences how you go about grounding. Oh, I totally agree. You're, it's a good point. There's, I mean, this could be a two hour, at least a two hour podcast episode on what to do and how to do it. But I, I think um, you know the point is for a lot of guys. What I want you to do is practice is understanding that your awareness and your wife's awareness are different. And this is the reason she might be acting different, right? Focused awareness versus diffused awareness, right? When you, we walk into a room, Tim, you and I go into you know, a party or a networking group or a business meeting, we notice a few people and we focus on the people that you know, we, what we care about. Whereas for most women, when they walk in, they automatically instantly focus on everybody, which is an oxymoron, I get that, but it's diffused so much that they notice all the things calling at them, right? And it's just different. And so as men, as we get to understand that a little better, right? We're different species. That's where the touch comes into grounding. And as you said, the way you touch, you got to know where you're at in the relationship, the way you mm. touch, how you touch, when you touch, these things all play a critical role. Uh, for the purpose of this episode, what I want the guys, you guys to take away is, is to try this, test this out, right? Three times a day, three times a day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that you do this for a week and see how it works for you is just touch your woman, right? Not sexually touch her, but just touch her. Hand on the back. Hey, babe, how was your day? Give her a hug, arm on the shoulder, touch her arm three times a day for one week and see if you notice a difference. See if you notice a difference around her. Is she paying more attention to you? Does she feel lighter, right? Does she feel a little bit more, a little bit more energetic? right? Are you getting a little bit more focused? And I'm going to guess she's going to be a little happier. And she won't know why, but she'll probably be more attracted to you too. Mm. So gentlemen, I mean, this is a great way. We've talked about this before. In fact, we have something for you called the Reignite Cheat Sheet. For those guys that haven't gotten, I highly recommend starting there to Tim's point. You got to know where you are in that relationship. You can add this as an element to that. You just got to go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash bonus. It's there for you. It's a free cheat sheet. You can walk down step-by-step instructions how to reignite your relationship. But make sure you're also practicing this grounding aspect, right? Are you grounding her, right? If she's got diffused awareness, could you imagine? Imagine music playing while you're trying to read or focus on a meeting and all this stuff that's going around, kids running around the house, right? You can't focus as a man, right? The woman, your woman's going through this all the time. Now you get grounded. Now you can actually mm. do it. Bonus points. If you do this, in combination with the hidden motives technique. Ooh. Boom. Absolutely bonus. So if you don't know what the hidden motives technique is, we have a podcast episode that we talk about that as well. Um, we go to deep dive into the hidden motives technique if you actually go through the activation method program. Uh, if you're interested in that, go over to thealphareset.com to find out more information about that. That's thealphareset.com. But that's a definite bonus. In fact, a thousand bonus points, guys. <laughs> it will give you mm -hmm. a thousand bonus points if you take all three steps, right? Uh, again, that is the reignite cheat sheet combined with touch and the hidden motives technique. Yeah, and just just on that point, if anyone's kind of if we've piqued anyone's curiosity, I want to see if I can drive this home a little bit. So there was a guy that joined the activation method. Uh, what day is it? Two days ago. Oh my god, it was such an emotional conversation. In him, him enrolling, uh, he was in tears. This is his second marriage. He's been with his wife ten years. Um, it's been on the rocks for about 
at least two or three months, which means it's obviously a lot longer than that. Um, she'd been moved out for a month. And he said, look, Tim, I just, I don't want all this money if I can't have her. I mm. want her. I mm. realize now, but she thinks that I'm just saying these things now to get her back. When she comes back, it'll all go back to how it was, but it's not going to do that. And he's been trying all these other techniques over the pre past kind of four weeks, playing hard to get. Um, just, just things that made him come across like he didn't care to be honest yeah. and pushed her further away anyway this week is her birthday so he joined the program on wednesday we fast-tracked his strategy session to yesterday to thursday because last night he's his wife had accepted a birthday dinner date with him so we got the strategy session in yesterday morning before he went on his date went through the hidden motives technique and uh, some of the actual shadow stuff as well. We'll talk about stories that was on the last episode. And anyway, the day ended with his wife asking in the car park, asking him for a hug. Ooh. Yeah, which is huge. You know, tiny little things like that is a massive indicator of the desire that she still has for him. Previous to that, she was like, she was gone. She was out. She'd been living with her sister for a month and you know, didn't want anything to do with him. And, and wow. now he's... Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. So, um, point being, guys, yeah, there's, there's, you know, regardless of where you are, are within your marriage, um, and if you combine the reignite with uh, the grounding and the hidden motives, and uh, and it's easy to do. It might sound like a lot, but it's actually pretty easy for you to do. Um, you know, has the potential to really change, to turn things around for you. Or maybe not even turn things around, just improve things depending on where you're at. Well, the secret ingredient to all of this, Tim, right, is taking action. You know, we talk oh, about this all the time. And I used to be one of these guys that would listen to podcast after podcast and go, oh, yeah, I'll do that. And then go to the next podcast. Don't be that. Right. My life took an exponential jump when I started deciding to take action after learning something. Absolute action. And guys, I'm going to really drive this home. You want to do that right now. So if anything we talked about today sounds like something that's worth trying, again, I challenge you seven days of touch, right? Tim, Tim's challenged you to the hidden motives technique. And of course you had the reignite cheat sheet. These are all free resources to you guys, right? The thing is you need to take action. This should not be educational masturbation for you, right? Just educational porn, so to speak, where you're just <laughs> getting off by because you're learning something. You're getting a high because of new information. Information without actions is BS right? It just doesn't, doesn't do anything for you. It's all in the action guys, all in the action. So gentlemen, mm -hmm. uh, until next time, we'll see you on another episode of the powerful man show. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this episode. But as I always say in the moment of insight, take massive action. You see, there are two types of men that listen to a podcast like this. Those that go on from one podcast or show to another, just hoping things are going to change and realizing that they're gonna be in the same place month after month, year after year. You see, I was this guy, so I completely get it. You may just not be ready. But there's also a second man, a second man that listens to a show just like this. And this is a guy who takes massive action so they can shorten the learning curve, compress time, and get results to be the wolf. See, wolf is an acronym for wise, open, loving, and fierce. Now, ask yourself, which one am I? And just be honest with yourself there. And there's no judgment on my end, but if you're ready to move from deactivated deer mode, which is defend, excuse, explain, react, to activated wolf, wise, open, loving, and fierce, then go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash grow and go there now. In fact, I'll make it super easy for you. I will even put the link right in the description here so you can just click it and go over there now to learn more. Guys, in the moment of insight, take massive action. Go from deactivated to activated, because like I said, life is too short for average. And I'll see you on the next episode.